Hi everyone, this is Kate here, and this is a short time-lapse video of the tutorial that I've prepared for my Patreon. So on the Patreon, it's in real time, and you can follow the narrated tutorial there. But here, I just wanted to show you the process. So I started with sketching my kitten on the Canson Mouton paper. This is the smooth side, because smooth side works best for fur if you want to give that effect of actually soft and um, kind of a fluffy animal because if you have texture showing through it too much it kind of takes away from that um, soft effect and i am sketching the kitten with a derwent charcoal pencil you can also use a pastel pencil or a willow charcoal stick for example um, just don't use graphite or colored pencils for this because you will not be able to layer the colors over those um, you will still see the line kind of showing through the pastel layer and I'm starting with a warm kind of underpainting and I'm using a color that is very similar to the color of the paper um, color wise and also with the tonal value and I am adding these warm greens and kind of um, neutral browns very lightly so in this I wanted to keep the tooth of the paper um, not too saturated so that I can layer many layers of color over the top. So I'm also using some yellows and pinks and in this one I didn't use any white at all. So the best thing you can do when you are using the light colors is to actually use a light color that has uh, a light tone that has a color to it. So tints of different colors, they will work a lot better than just plain white because white is going to actually flatten your image. And I am also layering in the part where the kitten is lying down on his body and that area is going to just help me kind of bring the kitten into the composition because otherwise it would be just the head hanging in the air so I need that back showing that the kitten's actually lying down and the first layers I am blending them in and creating this kind of uh, smooth transition into the background. I am also using some yellow colors to actually warm up that underpainting and then we will be adding some cooler colors over the top. Another thing is you have to follow the markings that you see on the animal. Not only the fur growth but also the markings are very important. So um, for me the priority would go First to the correct placement of the features, the second place goes to the correct um, value of your colors. If you get the colors wrong but the value is still correct, it's still going to look good. And then it's also important to get those markings right. So the cats, um, any cat, if you look at them, they have these markings that are similar, be it a tabby or a ginger cat or a black cat or a white cat, you will still see those markings. I usually look at Chloe, my cat, she's black, and I look at her under very bright sunlight. You can actually actually see those markings, not only on the face, but also on the body of the cat. So do pay close attention to that. And after I have done the initial kind of mapping in of my markings on the cat, First, I used a kind of grayed out green, and then I am adding also some grayish blues. So these blues are going to play uh, with the warm underpainting that we did. And when we will layer the brown color over the top of them, they will still shine through. And it's going to create depth in the image and create that appearance of the soft fur. So I am correcting the shape. Uh, one good trick that I learned is to use makeup sponges. If you layer the pastel too much over an area um, or if you drag it out too much like I did with the back of my cat, then you can use the makeup sponge that kind of softens it in the beginning, takes off the initial layer and then you can erase the rest with a kneaded eraser and you will have no trace of pastel left but um, it works even on blended areas but be careful if you have too much pastel it might not lift all of it out and then i'm starting to add those marks with a uh, dark brown and i'm also um, adding the eyelid around the eye the lower and the upper eyelids with the same dark brown so i will be still adding some black over the top because i want the 
focus, the most contrasting thing to be the eyes of the kitten. So I will be layering them over the brown, but still, even if I layer the black over the brown, it will still shine through and it's not going to create that black flat color. And as I'm adding the pastel, I'm constantly kind of rubbing it in slightly with my fingers just to create that effect of fluffy hair. Because if I were to leave the marks as they are, it would create an appearance of a wet cat. So the hair strands would look um, as if they're kind of wet and clumping together. And I'm very careful observing uh, carefully the reference that I have just to make sure that I am placing those marks correctly. And when I am happy with the placement of the marks, I can add the features, that is the eyes and the nose. And this is basically more of a sketch approach. I'm not going to go into um, a huge amount of detail. I'm just going to indicate those features just to portray the character of the cat, just to show that it's a cat. But um, the viewer, as he's looking at those features, um, he's going to kind of put the picture together. So I like this uh, thing with pastels where you kind of tell the story and don't push it until the end and the viewer kind of thinks <laughs> the ending himself so he understands that it's the eye and that there are the highlights and things like that. And then I'm also warming again the areas that I see that have kind of a warmer glow and those usually are near the nose and near the ears. So those are the areas that have a slightly different color in the cat. And now I can start adding the detail as some um, hairs, just a bit, some clumps of hairs that are lighter. And I am also adding some lights back into the areas if I went too dark with the brown. After I'm happy with that, I can start adding those brighter patches and I am adding the brightest color on the rims of the ears because there are the hairs that are kind of um, slightly backlit and they the hairs themselves, they catch uh, the light and they look um, glowing as if they're glowing. And also this light yellow, I'm adding it around the eyes. So I'm using different um, colors around the eyes. I'm not using one pastel only. I'm using different colors just to create that uh, more interesting um, color game. And now I can start um, creating those sharper details. So basically we go from a blurry image into a sharp contrasting image. And all those under layers that I put, they're helping me create a cap that has dimension to him and does not look flat. And with a compressed charcoal stick I am adding some details on the mouth but just a bit and lightening slightly that chin just to kind of bring it forward um, so that it doesn't look as if he doesn't have a chin and with the same greens that I used for the fur I'm adding the color to the eyes and just a bit of that yellow to kind of make them glow just a tiny bit so it's quite bright but it fits into the eye very nicely and then I'm using the pastel pencil, this is a Carbothello, but it layers nicely over the layers of pastel that I have. So I have, um, the layer of pastel is not too saturated on the paper, so the pencils, they still work. And I found that the less um, kind of, the more um, softer your movements are, the less pastel you deposit with every stro stroke, you can build up beautiful layers that kind of shine different colors through them. And I'm also using some of that uh, gray violet for the areas around the mouth, just to kind of bring out the whites. And still, it's not the white, it's a gray violet. And the only white that I used, this is a Rembrandt white. I'm just adding those um, whiskers and the brows to the cat. So instead of using the pencil, you can use a harder pastel to do the job. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and it's actually more of a time-lapse video. I hope you liked it and I would really appreciate it if you could like it and share it, this video, um, because it's going to help me kind of uh, move forward with my YouTube channel. So thank you. And also you can check out the full tutorial on my Patreon of this kitten and many more other tutorials there as well. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the future tutorial to come. Bye!